Next generation Zen 5 CPUs are looking way faster than I was originally expecting. In fact, Intel might be in serious trouble. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Fellas, I'm starting to get really hyped for AMD's Zen 5 Ryzen 9000 CPUs because not only is the performance looking really, and I mean really good, but there's some serious upgrades to the microarchitecture itself that could make your PC just feel snappier and address the latency issues AMD has been facing with their processors. Now, this all started with some leaked information from Red Gaming Tech, but has quickly spiraled into a ton of leaks from various different people. Now, like I mentioned, Red Gaming Tech had come out and mentioned some pretty basic stuff about these next generation CPUs that was very good to hear, such as it would be an AM5 drop-in upgrade. So if you're sitting there with a Ryzen 7000 series CPU, yes, you can flash your BIOS and drop these things right in for a substantial performance increase, but the core count would likely remain the same with eight cores per CCD and a maximum of two CCDs for 16 cores and 32 threads. However, we apparently would be getting a memory per performance increase, likely seeing up to 6400 megahertz DDR5 now being the sweet spot instead of 6000 megahertz. But where it starts to get really interesting is when we start to really dive into the nitty gritty. As he did mention, apparently this would be on N4P and likely remaining at a similar clock speed to Ryzen 7000, although it could be increasing possibly as high as 6 gigahertz. And this is the big one. They're going to be changing the microarchitecture to potentially introduce the latter 3D cache, as was originally mentioned by Adored TV. And this is going to be a huge one, guys, because this, in addition with the apparently larger L1 cache, is just going to mean far lower latency for the CPU overall. I mean, we're talking about a CPU which now is going to have direct access between every single core, as when you take a look at this new ladder 3D cache design here, well, yeah, that 32 megabytes of L3 cache has a ton of different ways to go to every single different core, meaning again, yes, this is going to be a very, very fast CPU, and I imagine that some of those latency offsets that you see from 3D cache will actually be realized simply by having a more efficient cache structure like in this image. Now, in terms of the IPC, Red Gaming Tech did also mention that it could potentially be up to a 30% increase over over our current Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, which are already pretty good. However, with all these games coming out that are getting more and more CPU demanding, a large IPC increase is definitely going to be something that we're going to need to see, especially if you want to upgrade to something like a 5080 or 5090, which apparently the 5090 could be seeing upwards of two and a half times the ray tracing performance. Well, with a lot more ray tracing performance comes a lot more load on the CPU. So yeah, if you want to upgrade to a 50 series card and start to really use ray tracing, I do think think it'll be a good idea to start looking at your CPU and platform as well to make sure you're not being held back. And wow, guys, it's looking like Ryzen 9000 could be it because now we have even more information on top of that already that apparently the performance could actually be 40% higher than our current Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. Now, this information, and by the way, I will have all this information linked in the description below, comes from Kepler underscore L2. Now, this guy's leaked a ton of stuff before, so it's not just some random nobody in a forum. However, of course, since it isn't official information, do take all this with a grain of salt, but according to him, yes, he said, quote, core for core, Zen 5 is over 40% faster than Zen 4 in spec, which is going to be a form of a benchmark. Now, guys, that is insane because over 40%, well, even if we're going to be conservative and call it 40%, well, we're just talking about the vanilla Ryzen 9000 series chips here. But what we do know is that the Ryzen 9000 X3D chips will get an even larger performance uplift, bringing them not only 
40% or greater over Zen 4, but potentially, depending on the workload, we have to multiply that by at least a 15% uplift from the 3D cache, especially for gaming, where in some instances, it can be even far greater than that. Well, that would put us at around 46% faster than the Ryzen 7000 series chips. That is absolutely mind-blowing and a type of jump that we haven't seen in a very, very long time, if these leaks turn out to be true. Now, of course, we don't know if that's going to be the case or if this is just going to be isolated to a specific segment of the CPU. That certainly could be true. However, I do think even if we were to be conservative, we're probably going to be talking about a bare minimum of roughly 30% faster when talking about the 9800X 3D versus Ryzen 7000. And that is still substantial. And again, that's probably the bare minimum I would expect. I would be shocked if we saw anything lower than 30% based on all the leaks and rumors that we're seeing. But again, closer to 50% or maybe even greater could be achieved. So all that's sounding really great, but you know, when is this stuff gonna come out and what is it gonna cost? Well, I'm glad you asked me because I'm going to answer my own question by telling you this. Yes, it's looking like by the end of the year, the Ryzen 9000 series chips will be available. Now, of course, nothing is confirmed as of yet, but all of the leaks and rumors are suggesting and just based on previous releases that that is very likely to be the case. If I was to put an exact date on it, I'd probably say sometime around October or probably November at the latest would be an ideal launch time for these CPUs. So whether or not you're on AM5 now and just want a drop in upgrade, or if you're someone who's still sitting on AM4 or maybe even an older Intel platform, it's looking like pretty soon you could be getting a very, very substantial upgrade from these CPUs. However, it will be a little bit longer to wait for the X3D. Now, there is a possibility that they could actually surprise launch these things by the end of the year as well, but I do think it's probably a little bit more likely that you'll probably see X3D at the very beginning of 2025. So it is gonna be a little bit longer of a wait for the X3D processors, and those are definitely the ones that I'm most interested in, as the X3D cache certainly does help out Ryzen quite a bit by limiting the amount of fabric cross that's going on, which is still the bottleneck for the Zen architecture as a whole, but maybe that will be fixed with Zen 6. We'll have to talk about that one in the future, but overall, yes, it's looking really, really good. The release date's seeming like if you're at least looking for 9,000 vanilla, probably not super long at this point in time, and I do believe since there still will be competition from Intel that the prices are likely not going to change, and by mid-2025, we'll probably drop down to the lower prices that we've all come to know and love after discounts from AMD. So yeah, I'm very excited to see what the Ryzen 9000 series has to offer so it can go hand in hand with the RTX 50 series, and I'm going to start saving now so that I can pick one up. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the Ryzen 9000 series can really achieve nearly 50% higher performance than Ryzen 7000 series? Or do you think that's just way too optimistic? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.